Um, we will now proceed with questions from the committee under the five minute rule. And I will begin by recognizing myself for five minutes. Um, again, the, this has been very powerful testimony from all of our panelists and from our members of Congress who, who led off this morning's proceedings. For too long, Muslim, Arab, and South Asian American communities in the United States have been the targets of unfair and unwarranted suspicion, scapegoating, and stigmatization. In the aftermath of the attacks on our country on 9-11, these groups faced intense interpersonal discrimination and violence, as well as discriminatory government policies that were implemented at the federal and state levels. These policies have subjected Muslim and Arab communities to intense government surveillance and investigation under the guise of counterterrorism and national security. For instance, following a policy change in 2002 requiring all aliens to register their change of address within 10 days of moving, a Palestinian legal immigrant was pulled over in my home state of North Carolina for driving four miles over the speed limit. He was detained for two months and eventually charged with a misdemeanor for failing to report his change of address. Between 2000 and 2009, hate crimes against Muslims in the United States increased by 500%. And rates of attacks against these groups remain troubling, troublingly high to this day. Unfortunately, in my home state of North Carolina, we are familiar with violent attacks against Muslims. In 2015, three young Muslim university students were brutally murdered in, by their neighbor when they were sitting down to have dinner. While the perpetrator ultimately pl pled guilty to first degree murder, he was never charged with a hate crime. In recent years, there have been numerous reports across the state of verbal and physical assaults on Muslim women who wore head coverings. The Muslim, Arab, and South Asian American populations in my district continue to grow. And these groups are an essential part of the diverse and rich culture of the Research Triangle area of North Carolina. It's critical that we continue to examine the experiences of these communities in the United States and do everything we can to prevent unwarranted acts of discrimination and hatred against them. My first question is for our councilwoman from Tennessee. Um, how has government surveillance of Muslim communities, including mosques and Muslim organizations, undermined the relationship between community members and law enforcement? Thank you. Uh, that's a very great question because part of the work that AMAX was doing was actually trying to work between the law enforcement and the Muslim community. And we would actually have meetings with new recruits to talk about how to deal with the Muslim community as a way to make sure that, you know, there's a, a cooperation on all sides. But every time there's a surveillance, every time that there's a profiling, then it sets our community back because it feels as if here we are again. Uh, no matter what we do, uh, it's never enough. And so this act of surveillance is something that we, it's counterproductive to the work that we all want to do. If the intent is security, if the intent is making everybody safe, then it's important for our law enforcement to work with the community rather than spying on them and going behind their back. And so in my community, what I've seen is that people don't want to uh, uh, cooperate. People don't want to speak up. People don't want to come to the mosque because they feel like their privacy has been violated. So it is very detrimental to the work that my organization, AMAC, was trying to do, uh, and it's still very detrimental to, to the citizen in my community. Thank you very much for that response. Uh, Maya Berry, um, and I know we only have a minute left because I'm adhering to the time too, but how have, how have the United States immigration policies fed in to this discrimination and this systemic um, abuse of people who are here legally and just our citizens and neighbors? I think one of the most deeply impactful ways um, 
that it's been negative is that it views um, our communities as this existential other, continuously foreign or otherized uh, in a way that's just not consistent with um, both the history of our country, given we're all immigrants to this na wonderful nation, um, and it's important that that we understand it as um, not also keeping us safe. Like part of the, what you'll hear from, I think, many of our testimony, the witnesses today, is that these policies put us in some ways more at risk rather than protect us. Thank you very much. Um, I am now going to turn the gavel over to Congresswoman Jackson Lee um, to preside because I have to be somewhere else and then we'll hear from our ranking member. Um, but thank you all for your testimony and for your time today.